Most science fiction in film and on television throughout the 1970s and 80s generally depicted bleak post-apocalyptic or dystopian visions of tomorrow, but Star Trek was different. Gene Roddenberry believed that human beings would overcome the social and political problems that had plagued the 20th century and would go on to build a hopeful and enlightened civilization in the centuries to come. The Earth of the Federation, for all of its unrealistic, utopian ideals, is certainly an attractive and desirable place to live. I want to specifically focus on Star Trek The Next Generation rather than going all the way back to the original series in the 1960s, primarily because we're about to get a TNG reunion in the third season of Star Trek Picard, which is due to air next month. The Next Generation, when it aired, introduced a new audience to Roddenberry's optimistic vision of the future, and I think the show benefited enormously from the standalone episode format. Each week, there was another challenge, another situation, a new moral or ethical dilemma, or another danger for the crew to overcome. And at the end of the episode, sure enough, the crew would have learned an important lesson, or the conflict would be resolved, and they would sail off at warp speed for next week's voyage into the unknown. Before one even delves into the themes of the episodes themselves, the very format of the show itself exuded an optimistic undercurrent. Here is an extraordinary starship, the Enterprise-D, gorgeous inside and out, a bright, colourful, warm luxury liner in space, populated by the best of humanity, plus some interesting alien allies. And they're heroically journeying week after week into the unknown, exploring the final frontier, saving the day or expanding humanity's knowledge of the universe as they venture further into the previously uncharted reaches of space. The United Federation of Planets was not always perfect. It was run by humans and humanoids, after all. It made mistakes, some of those explored in greater detail in the likes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but the institution itself was founded on the understanding that humanity's past mistakes would not be repeated because humanity had become more vigilant and enlightened. But there were signs in the J.J. Abrams reboot films that the heart and soul of Roddenberry's philosophy had slipped away somehow. This was especially noticeable in the simplicity of the stories, the focus on cheap gags and big action set pieces, and the edgy dark lighting, set design and tone that had begun to emerge, especially in 2012's Star Trek Into Darkness, a horrid movie in my view. So my expectations were not high, for Star Trek's return to television with Discovery, which began in 2017. Especially given that Alex Kurtzman would also be involved, and I was right to be concerned. As expected, the show was, and continues to be, an utter train wreck. Dull, joyless, bleak, filled with unlikable and unpleasant characters, and the writing panders to wokeness and current leftist political sensibilities. The same edgy dark lighting, terrible design aesthetic, awful storylines, and of course, it's missing Star Trek's sense of hope and optimism. And things are no better with Star Trek Picard. The future depicted in this new Star Trek feels post-apocalyptic all of a sudden. The Federation is practically unrecognisable, to the point where it appears to have abandoned its very foundational humanitarian principles. The Federation does not get to decide if a species lives or dies. Yes, we do. We absolutely do. The first two seasons of Star Trek Picard don't even primarily take place on a Federation starship. Instead, Picard is saddled with a ragtag ensemble of unlikable misfits, neurotics, alcoholics, and murderers. And by the way, there's a lot of swearing in this show. Sheer f***ing hubris. None of the characters embody the aspirational principles of self-improvement that have always been a staple of the franchise. After all that Captain Picard had done for the Federation during his career, he's practically spat on by a senior admiral and verbally abused. There's no peril here. Only the pitiable delusions of a once great man desperate to matter. The Federation has lost its conviction and belief in what it once stood for, much like Picard himself, actually. 
the institution has a sense of defeat about it now. It's racked with regret about its calamitous evacuation project of the Romulans when their homeworld was destroyed. And so is Picard. He's tortured by it. Furthermore, the writing was so bad that the Federation seemed to just forget about its past acceptance of the rights of synthetic life forms like the EMH Doctor and Commander Data, because there was this truly awful android story arc about androids being treated like slaves and a subsequent ban on synthetics. It was so poorly written and executed, I scarcely know where to begin. Regardless, I got the feeling that the Federation, as depicted in Star Trek Picard, was a shadow of its former self and had lost the values and principles that had made it great. Why did you really quit Starfleet? Because it was no longer Starfleet. I'm sorry? Because it was no longer Starfleet. The Federation was essentially a galactic superpower, an empire, and now it felt like its best days were behind it. And while that's an interesting story arc to explore of its own, I felt that this wasn't being explored for creative reasons, but more so because the writers didn't actually believe in Star Trek's ideals to begin with. Since the 2009 J.J. Abrams films, there's certainly a sense that the people running the franchise have only a very superficial understanding of it. Star Trek may have dealt with political allegory and explored current topical issues in the past, but it was never bound by them. In many respects, modern Star Trek feels like it's just as much a prisoner of wokeness and our culture's current sense of nihilism as any other pop culture franchise. Our world is embroiled in one crisis after another, you may have noticed, and people want, and I think deserve, optimistic escapism. Star Trek is no longer providing that. Instead, it's giving us more bleakness, more nihilism, and also heavy-handed current year political messaging. The first season had a poorly constructed story about racial discrimination, with androids being the focus of the story. It also had a refugee crisis subplot concerning Romulans. The second season occasionally makes mention of environmentalism and a brief commentary on immigration and ICE in America while Seven of Nine had to be made a lesbian for diversity purposes. In short, I believe Star Trek is no longer capable of being legitimately counterculture. It cannot and will not call out wokeism and instead panders to it. The current political establishment is woke. Most corporations are woke. The system we live under is therefore woke. So if Star Trek is woke, it is therefore pro-establishment. It cannot offer any meaningful dissent against the establishment. In the 1960s, Star Trek was counterculture. You can't seriously tell me that Star Trek is counterculture today. <laughs> I can just see the video responses I'm going to receive to this already. <laughs> now, one can hope that Star Trek Picard Season 3 is not woke and just goes about its business of telling an interesting science fiction story. And hopefully it's a good time. What we're essentially getting is a kind of Season 8 of Star Trek The Next Generation the reunion of the TNG cast. But our world has changed in a great many ways since the show concluded in 1994. And our political and media establishment continuously depict the world as one of crisis, chaos, and a future of uncertainty and instability. And, of course, our society is more divided than ever before, unfortunately. Not exactly a recipe for hope and optimism, this is precisely the kind of age that Star Trek should thrive in, by speaking against the prevailing zeitgeist and narratives of our time and showing the audience a bright, inspirational and hopeful future far removed from the challenges and strife we currently face. In many respects, I can see that modern science fiction has regressed to the nihilistic worldview of the 1970s, as you probably know, I have recently reviewed several dystopian films from that era, with several more to come. Now, I'm actually not sure that many modern Hollywood writers would be capable of capturing the hopeful and optimistic vision of the future that the next generation and classic Trek shows gave us. I don't see much evidence that modern Hollywood really believes in such a philosophy. 
But on an optimistic note, regardless as to which direction Star Trek Picard Season 3 goes in, be it optimistic or more of the same nihilism, we'll always have the original seven seasons of The Next Generation, which in my opinion were the truest expression of Roddenberry's vision of the destiny of mankind. Thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.